Yo, it's your boy Six and welcome back to yet another tutorial. As always, be sure to hit that subscribe button if you are new here in order to get the latest video every single week. We recently broke 800 subscribers, so thank you all for the support as we're just getting started. In today's video, I'm teaching you a simple yet wonderful effect that you can do with any deck of cards titled Backstop by Carl Foles. It was originally published in his book, My Best Self-Working Card Tricks in 2001, and I think it's a really simple but fun effect that you'll have fun performing. I'm gonna show you how you could do this as a setup or no setup card trick, and as always, I'm gonna show you my finer little details and touches that I add to the effect that I think make it that much stronger. So make sure you stick around to the end because there's some really good ideas that I'm gonna share with you. And plus it's the finer details I think in Magic that can really bring your effects to the next level. So let's go ahead, take a look at the performance of this self-working card trick and then we'll get right in to the tutorial. All right, so let's take a look at Backstop by Carl Foles. I'm gonna begin by giving the cards a little mix like this. So the cards are a little shuffled, give a little overhand mix as well, why not? And here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna go through the cards like this and the spectator is gonna call out stop at some point and they're gonna have a card to remember. So let's go like this, they say stop. And let's just say this is their card, that's the card they have to remember. I'll let it sit there for a second so you guys can all see that. And what we'll do is we'll cut the cards just like this, mixing up the location of that card. So it's now lost somewhere in the pack and I can even give it a, another cut like this, give it a, a little shuffle, lose the cards. You get the idea, right? So now the card is hopelessly lost somewhere in the pack and they're just thinking of that card. But here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna try to find their card with a little bit of luck. So I'm gonna deal through the cards like this and I'm gonna see if the cards can actually give me some kind of sign, some kind of sensation maybe to see where I could stop and I'll try to stop at your, well, that's a sign if there ever was one. That doesn't get any more obvious than that sign there. Let's see what it actually says. It said, oh, go back three cards. Look, if I go back one, two, three, and there we have, what was the spectator's card? Well, it should be the three of clubs. And yeah, we got it, look at that. And this is Backstop from Carl Phelps. Let's go ahead and get into this explanation. Yeah, this is a fun little effect. Super easy to do, it'll be very quick to teach you. First thing you need to do is go ahead and get a double blank card. Uh, if you don't have a double blank card, you can obviously write it on any single playing card. Maybe the Joker, you can write in the back of the Joker and write in the front, write this message. Get an index card, cut it so it fits because it really doesn't have to be a playing card. It helps for the shuffling procedure that I'll show you that I do but for the most part, you can either get a double blank card, which you can find in the link in the description below to pick it up on Amazon, or you can just simply go ahead and just uh, put a sticker on the back of a playing card and the front of a playing card, use a joker right on the front and back of the joker. Uh, it's really up to you, but you just need a card that says stop and go back three cards. And realistically for this effect, it can actually even be your business card and then you can give it away at the end. Um, if you're not gonna do the shuffling procedure. So I'm gonna show you the original handling first and I'll show you the touches that I added uh, that I think make it a little bit more fooling. So you need that and that's it. So, uh, and then deck cards. So we'll shuffle these up. This doesn't really matter. It's just a normal deck of cards. And here is the setup. And you're gonna take this card. Uh, oh, I should point out actually what I do is on one side I write stop. Then what I did is because I know I hold the deck in my left hand like this and I know I'm gonna show the card like this. I wrote stop here and then I flipped the card over writing go back three cards in this position. Uh, the reason is because I don't want to show stop and then if I wrote it the other way and turn this over and this is upside down now then I have to flip the card. Uh, when you're performing you want to avoid little things like that. So my suggestion is simply to know how you're going to display the card when you deal to it. So it stops here. I can show it and I know I turn the card over this way all the time. So when I turn it over, it's gonna read perfectly to the spectator. I don't have to reorient the card at all. So that makes a, a really, really useful tip for when performing because you don't wanna get stuck in the cards upside down and say, oh, what does that say? Oh, and then you have to flip it. It's, it's just a little sloppy and you wanna avoid that. So my tip is to uh, hold the deck in your hand, how you're gonna be dealing, write it this way first. So you have stop on this side, then flip the card. However you flip the card, if you flip the card this way, write it the proper way. However you turn your card over, I turn mine end for end, and then you write, go back three cards. So this way, every time you perform it, uh, it displays perfectly for the spectator. So that's what you need. Uh, I'm gonna place that in the third position from the top. So one, two, three, that's where that stop card now goes. And that's my setup, that is it. So if you're wondering about shuffles, uh, I start by shuffling myself. 
I always mix the cards up like this. And all I'm doing is holding back at least three cards, holding a little block. This is like a block retention shuffle. Uh, so what I do is as I shuffle, I'm dropping a bunch of cards, but I make sure that the left hand cards fall first. And I'm always gonna have a small block of cards left on the back. I'm just holding them back with my thumb so they end up on top and this keeps that card in place. What's nice is if you have a deck with uh, vintage white borders, I should guess you can call them. A lot of new decks are thin white borders, but these are a little bit uh, bolder, so they're more standard like the bicycle decks. Uh, what's nice about it is that you can spread the cards and because it's a double blank card, no one's really gonna notice it. It just kind of blends into the edges there, as you can see. Um, so that's a nice touch that you can spread the deck as well before you begin to kind of show the fairness of it all. But you still have that stop card in the third position. Now we're gonna go ahead and dribble through the cards like this and have the spectator call stop. So in order to do that, I'm gonna place my thumb at the back, four fingers at the front. Uh, I'm holding them. There's two ways to dribble. Uh, so I like to dribble this way. And what's happening is that my index finger is pressing down. My thumb has some pressure. My fingers have some pressure. It's a very light pressure. And then my index finger is kind of pushing the cards down out of my hand as I gently let go. So this is just a dribble with the deck of cards. Uh, an even easier way is to do it from the corners. So if you just put uh, maybe one, your second finger at uh, this corner, thumb at this back corner, and index finger on top, you can do it from the corners. I actually tend to do it more on my third finger for whatever reason, but uh, that's another way in which you can do it. It's really up to you however you dribble the cards. So I'm gonna go like this, expect it to call stop. Uh, to be honest, if, if you're not familiar with the dribble, the dribble, you can literally just have the spectator cut a packet of cards and then you take it back from them and say, take a look at that card. So if you're, if you're not sure how to do a dribble, it's new to you, just have the spectator cut half the cards so on the whole day, say, perfect, we're gonna take a look at this card. Just grab it out of their hand and show it to them uh, and go from there. So now we have the card, which is the five of spades. And what's gonna happen is now I'm gonna cut the cards. So I'm gonna take this packet, bring it to the right, and now I'm gonna just do a cut with this packet and a cut with this packet at the same time. So what really takes place is that five of spades is now going on top of these three cards that we set up in the beginning. These are two random cards and then our stop card. So by doing a single cut, it positions that selection one, two, three cards away from the stop card. So again, you dribble down, they say stop, you show that card, you bring it to the right, and now you just do a cut with both packets. So I just did a cut, that's it. Now I'm gonna take this packet, cut the left-hand packet, so the one with the selection goes into the middle of the other packet. It's that simple. It's really, it's really that easy. Um, it really couldn't get any easier, to be honest. <laughs> uh, and now you're set to perform the trick. So you can now deal down and just start dealing. In the original, this is where they pick up and start dealing. Uh, I don't do that. Um, I do a little bit different, but let me show you the original version and then I'll give you my tips. So now you just start dealing through the cards and you say, I'm gonna get a sensation from the cards, see if the cards can send me some kind of sign. As I deal through, just like this, I'm gonna see if the card, oh, there's my sign right there. It doesn't get any more obvious than that. Now it says stop, so I stop. I'm gonna show the other side. Let's take a look at the other side. Show that to the spectator. It says, go back three cards. So just from here, I'm gonna go one, two, and the third card will always be their selection, the five of spades, because that's where we positioned it. It was that simple. And uh, that's backstop. Uh, a couple of things about this. Because you don't necessarily have to do that, that fancy table cut um, if you don't like it. Maybe it's too flashy for you, whatever the case is. I like the confusion because it kind of adds to the effect and the, the, the haphazard nature of it all. But let's just say we put this here, back to the third. You can simply just dribble through, have the spectator say stop, show their card, give this packet a cut, and then just put it inside uh, of that. If you feel... Uh, brave enough, I would do this personally, I like to do this, is what I would also recommend is have it in the same position, but now I have the spectator cut. So I tell the spectator, go ahead, cut the cards and look at the card uh, that you have. So now they've done that. Then I say, you know what, give the cards a complete cut. And this is all happening in the spectator's hand. So you're trusting your spectator not to drop the cards here. So they cut, they look at their card, the three of spades, they go ahead, give the cards a cut. And then you say, lift up a packet from the table and drop that inside the middle. And you let the spectator do all the work. You don't even have to touch the cards. And I think that makes it even stronger if you do it this way, because you've never touched the deck. And uh, basically they set it up in position for you. So that's another way in which you can do it by having the spectator do all the work. And now you can go ahead and deal. 
You can also give the cards a few cuts. Um, I usually just recommend because I know that that card is somewhere in the middle there. I just cut off a small packet like this and do one single cut because then I would bring it from the middle a little bit closer to the top so I'm not spending too much time dealing. Um, that's an important feature as well. But let's talk about some of the, the touches that I added because if you noticed when I performed it, I shuffled the deck. So here's what I did for the shuffle. And I'm gonna take out this stop card again. And what I did with this stop card is I did what's called an edge mark. I marked the edges of this card and it's a very simple way to do that. And what you do is you take a pencil, look at that, I happen to have a pencil here, and you're gonna place the card on its side and you're gonna take the edge of the pencil like this and you're simply just gonna gently go over the edge of the card. And what you're doing is you're just simply making that card uh, a little gray, right? You're discoloring it just a touch. So I'm gonna go like this. Again, on the other side, you wanna do it to both sides, obviously, because just in case the card gets uh, disoriented, you can actually find it on either side. And now I have an edge mark on the card. Now what you're thinking, what does that do for me? Well, I'm gonna put this back inside the middle of the deck here, because now you can see that now, this is, I mean, I, I just did it twice. I had it already set up from the beginning, but you can actually see now that there is a little bit of shading for that one card and that's on both sides like this, right? So now I can see where that stop card is in the deck and that can actually help me a lot. So uh, the way in which I do this is that now that I have that edge mark card is that I can now go ahead and simply cut the packet because from the back I can see it. So, or I can pick up the deck and see the edge and all I'm gonna do is just cut because I know once I did this move, so let's go back to the beginning for a second here. This is third from the top. That's the edge mark card. They said stop somewhere. They look at the card. In this case, it's the 10 of clubs. Uh, we can do the cut, drop it into the packet, just like this. Now I can pick up the deck and I know, because I understand the procedure of the trick, that their card is gonna be the third card up from the stop card. So I wanna cut beneath my portion that is shaded. So I see my mark card. I'm gonna cut a few cards underneath that right and then i'm just going to cut that to the table now i know that the block at the bottom has their card and my edge mark cards so just like i did before with the shuffle holding the block on top i can now do the other other way where i hold the block at the bottom and what that looks like is this i'm going to cut the top packet over to the side in my right hand i'm going to drop a few cards so i'm going to drop at least five or six cards past that um, that mark just in case, right? So I can actually see the mark on the edge. And what I'm gonna do is to drop a few cards past it. I gotta get at least three cards past it, but I drop a few. And once I pick up that block, I can shuffle the rest of the cards together. And as you can see, there's a good block there. So I'm not risking shuffling the spectator's card at all. And again, I can just grab a small packet from the top, do it again, drop a huge block, shuffle it in. And it just looks like I gave it a few shuffles. Uh, finally, because I know that block is at the bottom, I can shuffle this whole packet on top. And the way, instead of cutting this packet and positioning that card a little higher to the top, which you could do, you could just simply give it a cut just like that and it's gonna place it somewhere in the middle. Um, I like to go ahead and do an overhand shuffle. So since my, my mark card there is at the bottom, I just wanna make sure you guys can see that there clearly. Now that my mark card is there at the bottom, I'm just gonna do an overhand shuffle just for about half the pack. All right, so I can stop here, because this is about how much I'm gonna deal, and I'm just gonna take this whole packet and drop it on top. And once I drop that whole packet on top, I am now set to deal. The position is set up. Now I just start dealing. Say, so I'm gonna see if I can go ahead and stop at a card. If I get a sensation, the cards can send me a sign. There's my sign. Stop, count three cards, go one, two, go back three, and I find the spectators, 10 of clubs. So this is a really cool way in which you can go ahead and build this all together. It's really nice when you add those shuffles in, it makes it even more fooling. So I'm gonna show you how I actually set this up beforehand because I don't always do this trick as the first trick. So you don't wanna have that set up sitting there. But what I would do honestly is I have that set up on top. But what I use is I use the two jokers instead now though. So those two jokers are my top two cards and the card box is empty, but I placed the cards inside and now I'm set to go whenever I want. 
However, if I don't want to perform that effect, because I don't always perform this effect, uh, and on top of that, I don't always use the jokers. I almost always leave the jokers inside of the deck. But what I do is I can now go ahead and just hold back three of those cards as I take out the rest of the cards. So I can just take the cards out and just count to myself, one, two, three. Nobody's paying attention, nobody knows what's going on. I'm simply taking a deck of cards out of the box so there is no heat whatsoever. Now I can perform with these cards, do a few tricks, and when I, the, everyone's guard is down, I just put these cards back so they're towards the top, and now I slide this deck inside. And then when I'm ready to perform this specific effect, I take out all the cards, and now the jokers and the selection, I mean the, the, the stop card are in the third position, everywhere they need to be, and now I can go ahead and perform this trick. Uh, if I didn't want to perform this trick for whatever reason, I can just simply go to the box and say, oh, I have the two jokers here, leave that one card, take out the two jokers, and just never talk about the card in the box and completely avoid it altogether if I didn't feel like performing that effect. So that is just a, yet another option for you. Now, I personally recommend that you do the version in which the spectator cuts the cards themselves because I tell you, it will amaze them beyond belief. So it goes third from the top like this. You place that deck down. You tell the spectator, go ahead, give it a cut. Look at that card. In this case, it's the two of clubs. Say, so give the cards a single cut. Lift up some cards from the table. Drop that pack in the middle, just like that. And now I can turn around after all that was done with the spectator. I can come, give my cuts, give my shuffles, whatever the case may be. Give a little overhand shuffle to bring that packet to the top. Start dealing. Stop when I see that stop card. And now I can go ahead and count back one, two, three cards. And then we end up with the spectator's card. And it is absolutely fantastic. Uh, my recommended version is doing that with the shuffles and you will have an incredible effect on your hands. There you have it, folks. That's it for today. Uh, as always, be sure to subscribe if you enjoy the stuff you're learning on this channel. And I will see you in the next episode. You see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. Fit up. Hop in my car and a giddy up. Giddy up. Secure the bag, yeah, I get the bus. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the drip, yeah, I'm fitted up. Fit up. Hop in my car.